Hi everybody, again, it's Kyle Cordes at Oasis Digital. Uh, my usual pitch reminder, at Oasis Digital, we develop complex, rich web software for you. At Angular Bootcamp, we train you how to do it using Angular, and we are very often hiring, so please take a look at our careers page. Okay, uh, a very unfortunate thing happened. This is my second take at this video. I had made some number of minutes of progress here, and then this was lost because uh, something crashed on my computer and I don't know what, but all of a sudden it froze up with a spinning ball and then it logged me out and my video file in progress was gone. I was thinking about just talking through these changes I've made, but I decided it's probably not too bad. It's probably pretty easy just to make them again because they didn't take that many minutes anyway. So for the sake of people following along, I'm just gonna, gonna be redoing some work from a little while ago. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is when, when we made the pair list last time, I had left behind this bit of ugliness, and that's not, that's not really great. That's just because I was having, having trouble getting the right API. Well, I did have a chance to find out the API. So uh, array from, which we had done, that was correct. And then uh, obviously that's got to be we start with, and then values, that was correct. But what I had missed is that is actually a function you call. So then you close the from, close the map. So that should be all we need to do. So let's, let's take a look and see if it still comes up and runs correctly. Yes, it does. Quick reminder for anybody who's uh, following. You need to download the server program. You download the client program. You type npm install in both. You type npm start in both. And then you're up and running and you can, you can run all these same things. Okay, so that worked. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make this change again. So let me see here. This is replace ugly code with array from. And I, I'd like to point out that uh, in, in our real production code, we actually strive to write production code kind of uh, of this level of quality. Uh, I don't, <laughs> we won't worry about the push. I'll go back and clean up the push later. Okay, uh, I, we strive to write production code that's, that's kind of this minimal and clean, and we usually have pretty good results. Okay, so kind of try to recreate my work. The next step I did last time is my tabular data in tables. So right now, this application is displaying a data which is fundamentally tab tabular data but it's not putting it in a table. Well, much like in HTML, we, people often abuse tables for layout, right? We're not gonna do that here, but if you have tabular data and you don't put that in a table, you could think of that as another form of HTML abuse. If you have tabular data, you should be using HTML tables. Like that, that is their entire purpose in existence is tabular data. So let's do that. Um, that'll be only in the view components and only in the HTML template. So we just have a real limited scope of what gets edited here. So just these two files, you have to get edited. Let me see here. So this becomes a, a table. And the closing one is a table. Um, and then this becomes a table row. Oh, look, it did that edit for me, how nice. And then let's just put the thing inside to get started in a, in a table data. And that'll be just a, you know, that'll get us a part of the way there. Same way here, this becomes a table. This becomes a table row. And then this time we actually have these two things already already peeled out separately. So we will get them in like that. Oops. Easy to make typos when you glance away from the screen for a moment for any reason. So that's okay. So now I should have at least some form of tables for my tabular data for both kinds of tabular data. And we do, but this bottom table is not real interesting because it just has one cell. So if I just look at look at the fields I have and copy those down here, I should be able to use those to get the right data in. Okay, so it looks like I have a timestamp, a symbol, a bid, and an ask. Well, for the sake of ease, I think we're going to skip the bid and the ask and maybe just put the bid. So I, I, I need a column for the bid. And then we already know the symbol because that's at the top. So we just need to, we need to timestamp and bids. So that's pretty easy. So q.timestamp, breaking my own rule there by typing. So q.bid. So that should be about all we really have to have. 
This should get us at least the first stab at tabular data. And indeed, it looks like it did. Okay. Uh, next, uh, so let's, for the sake of posterity, let's commit that. So, tabular data in tables. Okay. Uh, next, these are unlabeled, and I think unlabeled is a terrible idea. So let's label them. So we use ths, which is a semantic way to label a a, a, a heading of a, of a column. Uh, you want to use that because it's a different element, meaning your CSS can easily target the heading having a different uh, style also. So there's both kind of elegance reasons and practical reasons to do that. And I will bring this assembly over here and just reuse it. So pair and bid, <laughs> look at the bid again. So let's see if this gets me labeled tables. Oh. And indeed it did. I now have labeled tables. Um, I don't know, I guess I, many small commits, right? So I'm doing this in master. In a production project, I would never do this in master. A production project, I would do this on a branch of some kind, and then I would periodically uh, have, have someone help me review that branch, and then once a branch is good, I would probably squash it to a more reasonable number of commits and get it in a main line. But for the purpose of, of making it easy for people to follow along who look at the repo, I'm just kind of doing small chunks of work and I'm doing them as separate commits. So uh, table headings. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to do is just make this whole thing less visually ugly. And to do that, I'm gonna apply bootstrap styles. Now, if this were a real project, I would probably be reaching for Angular Material 2. But at this moment, it's December 2016, uh, Angular Material 2 is really nice, but it's also really not done. And so I don't want to fight running into the parts that, you know, that they just haven't implemented yet. And I don't need really that the sophistication and the material appearance. I just want it to not be so ugly. So I'm going to use Bootstrap. Um, I am not going to use any of the Bootstrap JavaScript. So I don't need to go get any kind of Bootstrap Angular adapter. I'm going to instead just completely cheat. I'm going to grab Bootstrap off of a CDN and shove it on my page to be done. So uh, here is a, uh, just one of the many CDNs. It's hopefully decent. Um, I think I will grab, well, I guess we'll maybe consider this production-ish code. So maybe I'll grab bootstrap min. That's probably the most ideal one to grab. Uh, and I, I want to copy the link tag that has the, uh, the source integrity stuff. So let's go just simply paste that in the index. So there's lots of ways to do this. There are really good ways to do it. There are great things to do to integrate with the tooling, and I'm not really doing any of those. I'm going to use this, this theme, though, because that makes a slightly nicer appearance sometime. So I, I'm just going to stick these two things in here, and then for the sake of making it easy to explain what's going on, I'm going to break up the long lines just a little bit. Here's a tip. HTML5, which is what we're using here with doctype HTML, this, there's no such thing as a closing slash. You're welcome to type a slash if you feel better about it, but it is simply ignored by the browser. It does not have a meaning in HTML5. HTML5 is not based on XML, and therefore it does not ever need closing tags. Link is what they call a void tag. Void tags do not have closing tags. Okay, so this is just my most basic way of get some bootstrap on the page and hope it looks a little prettier. And indeed it does. The problem is that it's kind of all stacked up here. So what I really want to do is use the bootstrap grid system. That's kind of what I was what I was dreaming of here. Um, I don't need the CDN anymore. The date pipe is to look at in a few minutes. I think first I'm going to put each one of these in a panel. And a panel is considered a component in bootstrap. So let me go click on panels here and try to find out. Here we go. So you, this is how you do a panel with a heading. Simple as can be. So let's take this thing, and right now it's a h3 with a table after it. I'm just going to divide that up and, and put it into here. So instead of the h3, I'm going to put the heading there, and then the whole payload I'm going to put there, remove that leftover, format it. Uh, that's probably pretty good. So let's just do the same thing again for the list view. So again, Put the heading there, put the contents there, 
auto format it because indenting by hand is a great idea 15 years ago. Uh, save all these and see if it loads up and looks a little better. Oh, there we go. So now these things are all in bootstrap panels. That's pretty good. That seems like a, a step worthy of a commit. So let's see here. Add bootstrap use panels. So that's, that's, that's a good step forward. Okay. Um, next, I would like to use the bootstrap grid system. So to use the Bootstrap grid system, once again, I'm going to just pop over to the Bootstrap documentation. I happen to remember that that's under the CSS part of the documentation, uh, but I'm just bringing this up to show it's here. I've typed so many things with the Bootstrap grid system that I can really get by without even looking at the documentation. So um, as a general rule, visual components like this one should not attempt to control their own size on the screen. They should just comply with wherever they're put on the screen. So I'm not going to use the grid system inside my components. Instead, I'm going to use the grid system at my application top level. So you make a container as the first kind of outermost bootstrap thing. And then you make a row. And then inside that row, you put columns. We'll make these column MD4 so we get three across if our screen is reasonably wide. And then we'll need to close that div. Um, then I think we're going to need three of these. So then we'll need to close that div and close that div. Uh, and then I'll simply start putting the pieces into the grid system that I have set up here. By the way, a hopefully valuable tip here, copy and paste can be a mess. Cut and paste is often a better idea. So if you saw me there, I kind of aggressively cut and pasted because that way I didn't have to mentally keep track of what I had already moved. I just cut and pasted one chunk at a time to move it. Okay, so let's see if this gets us a better overall appearance. Yeah, yeah, that's much better. Okay, one last thing to do with Bootstrap. Let's get these things into the Bootstrap uh, get into bootstrap tables, right? So we're, bootstrap has a nice table mechanism. So the way you do that is a class equal table. It's kind of odd, it's a table, class table. Uh, and I happen to know that a table condensed will get me a, a little nar narrower stripes on the screen, which I think are a little more appropriate for this program than the default really wide, you know, very plenty of breathing room you get from bootstrap. Okay, so that's good. That's good. Now we have a little, little better appearance. We'll take that. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to wrap up this video because this is the point that my, uh, that my computer crashed last time. And if I had to re-live re code this a third time, I would find it super frustrating. So I guess we'll, as usual, clean up the bits here. So I'm going to say use bootstrap grid and tables okay and then uh, I'd like to push this but I have to push it over the existing master and so I just happen to do a git push dash f if you want to do a forced push and hopefully it so that took it and then now to get my UI where it understands the state of the remote world I will do that. And then I, I had a failed recording. This is the one, this is what I lost. And I think I just recreated all that work anyway. So we will not need that branch anymore. Um, okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Again, Oasis Digital, we write software for you and we hire hiring at Angular Bootcamp. We can train you to do very high quality Angular work. Bye-bye.